Thank you for listening and supporting The Daily Memphian. Sign up for one of our many free newsletters and breaking news alerts at dailymemphian.com slash email to receive the latest local news stories impacting our community. Our weekly newsletters cover everything from sports to arts and culture, business, food, and more, along with daily updates of all the news we publish each day. Sign up or manage your email preferences at dailymemphian.com slash email. Welcome to Destination Delicious. Today I have Kelly English here with me. We're on Zoom. We are not in the studio. We're being safe. Though last night I was at Kelly's restaurant for the first of, I guess what's going to be is some Sunday night pop-ups that are going on for as, as long as they will, as long as they can. Welcome, Kelly. Tell me about uh, your Sunday pop-ups. How are you? It's nice to Zoom with you. It's nice. To, it's nice to zoom with you. I, even though I did just see you, but it was really nice to see you last night. And you were really busy, man. Oh man, we did I not. Know. We 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 got overwhelmed. We, so yeah, we're doing. We're going to do a series of pop ups on Sunday nights that are going to do a few different things. Um, mostly, they're going to go towards uh, a portion of the proceeds are going to go towards organizations that are trying to. Um, take care of our least fortunate citizens here in Memphis um, that might not be able to purchase their own PPE. And, you know, um, it, it's important uh, that everyone be able to have access to it. Actually, th- this all started, uh, I went to the grocery store um, uh, maybe, I don't know, three weeks ago, and there was a guy there and he had um, he had a, a plastic clear plate taped to the bill of his hat. And I was like, man, like we've got to have better access than that. And there, there's got to be better resources. And I know that there are plenty of government agencies doing everything they can. Everybody's doing everything they can in, in different ways. And we thought that was a, a way that we could um, we could affect uh, some some positivity from from our company, and at the same time um, have a few things that can help me keep people employed through this time. Um, I mean, it's I think that the future of and the current uh, you know, situation that we're in is, is finding a way that we can make all these things happen. Cause I truly believe we're either all going to make it through this together or not. Um, I, uh, I, I, me and my team got together and decided that this was the way that we wanted to do it. Uh, the first one we did was cheeseburgers where everyone on our staff that worked in the back of the house got to design a cheeseburger. Um, and, and put it out there. I want to mention these cheeseburgers real quick because I want to talk about some of them. them. So you had the Jermaine burger. We all know who Jermaine Mm -hmm. is because you're you're always up on Facebook with Jermaine doing your thing. Right. This is the same thing. Uh, It's stuffed with blue cheese and bacon, lettuce, tomato, onion, and um, mayonnaise. The key burger, tomato jam, arugula aioli, goat cheese, caramelized onions. O burger, guacamole, ghost pepper, jack cheese, chimichurri mayo. Spencer, uh, the gochujang mayo, kimchi, sunny side egg, cilantro. I got to tell you, I almost went with that one. That was well, his his grandma is straight up Korean. Oh, that sounded really good. Oh, that's mm-hmm. Spencer. Uh, I mm-hmm. didn't realize that. Okay, so I would I would have done it had I known. D burger, Granny Smith aioli, Swiss spinach, peanut butter, a squirt burger. Sorry, couldn't do it. Uh, queso stuffed, Philly cheese, and onions and peppers, mustard and ketchup. Sounded good, but and a veggie burger, uh, chicken fried cauliflower, which really is always delicious. Munster crab boil mayo and pickles. That sounded great. Did you have it? Did you taste that? So that was uh, that was that was the one that I made. Um, oh, and it was basic. It was basically an homage to the the Popeye's uh, chicken sandwich. Ah, I would, had I known that, I might have done that too. And of course, I, we had a mutual friend who was there. Who I, I texted later and I said, "Which burger did you get?" And immediately texted back and said, "Sorry, which burgers did you get?" Because I knew that Ted would have more than one. So we were we were talking about it. We had the Germain burger and the Key burger, and of the two, Key burger got my uh, it just got my vote. I don't know that tomato jam just really. Um, yeah, he was he was proud of that. So that's Pat Key. That's our our uh, our sous chef at Iris and Second Line, and um, he, he's done a, an amazing job um, through through every well before March, but certainly since March to now. 
Well, he, he made a really good burger and they all had different buns too, or at least the ones we had had different buns. And I could tell looking at other people uh, around me, they were eating things that did everybody have to come up with a different bun or just. Those are, I got three, I got three buns and we all called okay. dibs on three buns. All right. So uh, anyway, it was good. Had some, uh, some cocktails. I wanted the chili frito pie, but you can only eat so much. And did you have a, did you have a hot dog blunt? Oh, I can only, I was going to have, I've had a burger and that really good, uh, little cheesy casserole. Egg, Baked potato egg, casserole. Thing. Yeah, it was good. Um, so that was, that's a lot, you know, but, and we, two cocktails because things were running a little behind. So it, oh, it, it we sold, by the time. we sold 200 burgers in an hour and 40 minutes. That's like McDonald's. That's like one every 45 seconds. That is a fast food level of speed that we were not mentally, spiritually, or emotionally prepared for. Um, and I'll tell you, I made a mistake. And one of my mistakes was that what we did was we opened the phone lines at three o'clock to start taking curbside orders. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we opened, everybody wanted in between five and five thirty. And when we opened, it was it was, it was a dog fight to start with. I learned. And what I told, I got my whole staff together after last night. I said, my bad. <laughs> like I, I learned from this and uh, you know, what we'll do next time is we won't open up the phone lines for two hours for, uh, for to go orders. But you know, to be fair to go and curbside is, is not a secondary importance these days to dine in. It's, it's, it's not. And it's also really hard to, we found this out, you know, and on our vacation last week that a lot of places won't do, I, I said, I'm, we're not going to restaurants, period, not eating inside at restaurants because people from all over, we're in Florida, epicenter for COVID-19, not going to do it. Um, but if y'all want to get it to go, you know, that's fine or we'll cook at home or whatever. There was a lot of getting pizza because most of the restaurants that were doing dine-in, they couldn't do carry-out too. They weren't, they're not going to do both. And I've heard you talk about that. I learned why last night. That look on your, on your face. So what is the deal on that? Why is it so hard to, to, uh, to do both? Explain it. Well, well I'll tell you when, especially when you have the vault. So we sold 62 burgers before we opened, um, that were, that people were trying to pick up between five and five thirty, And you've got, you've got so much space to deal with. You've got so many bags. You got this one that doesn't want cheese. You got this one that wants this mayonnaise instead of that one. We made the decision really quickly to say, we can't do substitutions tonight. You can either get everything on your burger or everything on the side. That's the only two ways we can do that. I noticed um, that it was not asked, how do you want it cooked either? And it was fine. No. You came yeah, out, no. it was juicy, it was tender, it was good. But, but yeah. Uh, and if we do another cheeseburger pop-up, what I, the other thing that I learned was we need to have one patty that we, we dress differently, not things stuffed, not things that if we could have just been making burgers and passing them down and, and making them in different ways, it would, it would have gone a lot easier. Uh, the people that came, uh, were awesome. Uh, a lot of people left some extra money for the hospitality hub, which is who we were working with, uh, our partner for downtown. Um, I don't know exactly how much we raised for them, uh, last night because as soon as service was over and we were cleaned up, I went home. Uh, and, and, and then I, I went, I woke up and I went to work out and now we were talking. Uh, so that, that's been my life since then. But, um, yeah, it was a, it was a great night. Um, you know, we learned a lot. And, uh, so next week I'm going to, I'm very much looking forward to it. Jonathan from Las Tortugas is going to come do a taco pop up with us. Um, and we're going to work with him on who he wants to, uh, to raise money for, uh, in, in whatever community he wants. So it could be a different, it's not necessarily going to be hospitality hub next week not every time not yeah. every time uh we'll come back to them i think that they're 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 an amazing group uh that, that does a lot of things you know it's funny i called them uh and we talked all week and and friday i called them and said hey do you have some literature that we can put out to kind of tell people about what you do and just like a small business problem they were like you know what we have literature but it is so obsolete after what's happened since march that a lot of the things it says that we do, we haven't been able, like we, there are different focuses that we've done and we don't have it on a piece of paper. It's just okay. interesting. Yeah. So next, next Sunday, we know that you have Jonathan coming, but let's talk about it. today is, you know, that's a week away, Kelly, and things change so fast as we know. So what do you yep. think 
do you think that uh, restaurants are going to stay open? And, and tell me this, if for some reason dining rooms are closed again, I mean, you could continue, you could do this as a to-go thing, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in I fact, we, we could do these. We could probably, if we wanted to, do these pop-ups just as pickup. We could. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, w- one of the challenges that restaurants have is that we've got to we, we've got to create space for people to earn a living, you know, right. and um, uh, it's, it's a challenge when you're talking about capacities, when you're talking about the things you're doing, um, you know, when you look at the kitchen and, and you, you take a real, you take a step back and say, what can we accomplish? Because I can't just jam all these people into a kitchen like I used to. Um, you, can't. you have what, to, if people don't understand, you have to space your workers too. They have to be socially distanced, just like you have to do your diners. Yeah. And after reading your story last night um, on uh, on what Ports and Parlor is going through uh, with with their COVID, uh, uh, I don't know, outbreak is the word, but uh, they, they've, they've chosen to shut down for a little bit to, uh, to, to deal with a couple of people that are positive. We're going to put yardsticks up between the stations and we're going to make sure that people are um, six feet away from each other. And if we're getting, you know, we may even put a timer in the kitchen for every 10 minutes for people to stop, walk away from each other for a little bit and then come back to their stations. And that, you know, this is something that diners are going to have to get used to. Um, they're just going to have to, uh, when it comes to how long things take, you know, I've, I've read on different, different threads, you know, that, that right now restaurants the, the question is, are restaurants making people work while they're sick? And the answer is no, we're not at all. And we're, we're being more cautious. Than, not. Than I, don't think, I, don't, I would not say that's a, a blanket statement of truth. I think that there are too many things that I've read nationally of people being told. I, mean, I, I know of, uh, of a kid who, uh, this was way back in the beginning, and he was lying. He, was, he, he didn't want to go to work. And he called and you know, said, I'm sick. I have sniffles. I have whatever. And they said, too bad. Come to work. This was, um, and this was in Memphis, but, um, I don't think that, I don't believe, I believe that you would not have someone come in sick. And I believe that most people that you and I would know would, you know, normally in normal times, I would wonder, is someone telling me the truth or not? That's not something I can even waste time on right now. You know, that's not something that matters. You know, you don't, you said you're not feeling well, you don't come into work. Now, has it been a culture? of restaurants for, for people to come in, uh, whether, you know, whether you're, you, you either better be dead in jail or in the hospital. Um, yeah, that's the culture of restaurants, uh, that, that if you can walk, you can come into work and, um, it's the culture of know, a lot of business and it's unfortunate because it is how we spread flu. It's how we spread colds, but it, it restaurants, are a little bit different because you have to be there. You know, a newsroom, you no longer have to be there, but 10 years ago you had to be there and you better be on your deathbed if you weren't, if you weren't going to show up. So, but right. Right. And, and so I think that, I think that that needs to change, obviously, you know, I, and look, it's not just, you know, quote greedy owners, just, just telling people to come to work. You know, I, years ago I went to work when I wasn't feeling well, and, um, I, well, and this has happened plenty of times, but particularly I, w- I went to work when I wasn't feeling well and it, w- it was a pain that I had never experienced, uh, in my gut. And I, I, I worked until we weren't busy anymore. I went home and two hours later I had to go to the hospital for 10 days because I had a hole in my colon. Um, and that was just something, uh, you know, that I pushed through. I had a 104 degree fever and I was at work and, um, you know, the culture, the culture has to be a two way change. Uh, we have to, we have to respect ourselves as human beings that, you know, if we're sick, that everybody else needs to pick it up. But the reason, the reason that culture exists, at least in, in, in my field is that when there is a problem in a restaurant, it's free. That's what, that is what most people want. They want something that if, if there is, if your burger is cooked improperly, not only do you want another burger, but you don't want to pay for it. Not you. I'm talking in general. It ha- it is it is it is a thing, and if the food takes longer than whatever you think it should, you want a free drink or something or whatever it may be. And if we're truly as 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 a society going to say, 
we're not going to do that anymore. And we need customers help to understand that like, if your burger takes five minutes longer than you think it should, it's, it's going to come. Someone wasn't feeling well and they didn't come to work. I don't know what else to say. You know, that, that we have to be able to incorporate that into hospitality. I mean, and that's a conversation that's been going on now for, you know, three months or so. Do you think people are better or are people still kind of acting um, a little bit too entitled about, about um, the amount of time things take and uh, what, they're, what they're really expecting from a restaurant? I'll tell you that I've calmed down. Um, the first day we were open, we started to get behind on something and, and I started into not, not into, I, I'm not an angry chef, but when things, when things aren't going perfectly, we're, it's, it's a very stressful as it is in, in any professional kitchen environment. Like we're going to, we're going to be professional, but we're going to, we're going to push each other. And I have, I've calmed down on that. We've, we've had, I can think of one or two guests that, you know, it, it, they sat there with their arms folded because things too, took longer than they wanted them to, or they didn't get their food when they thought they were going to get it. Um, I, I don't have anything. I don't have anything for you right now. Uh, as we're going, as we're trying to fight our way through this, and you know, I'm save. People are being better. They're being kinder. It in uh, general, absolutely. In general, absolutely. And and you know, I will say this for the diners out there: we need to keep in mind it's not as much fun in its own, in a way to be out in another way it is more fun to be out but you you have to go through these things of okay I'm worried for, you know, for me I don't want to eat inside I want to eat outside I know you you're not eating outside no matter what I don't guess it matters what what's going on because you're not you don't like the heat but I, I just right now feel safe I like eating outside anyway but that's how I feel right now but you go in I mean you want to make sure you wear your mask you get up to you know you're sitting outside you get up to walk inside to to go to the restroom or to go in and, and maybe say a word to you or something you think oh I left my mask at my table gotta go back at the table and my mask to go inside I mean everything it just comes into yeah, I'm sanitizing all the time washing my hands in here get back to the table sanitizing I touch this I sanitize it it becomes a thing where you, you just get sort of this task fatigue of following the rules to keep you safe. So when you get out, you are a little, I mean, maybe just on edge, I guess is what I, I'm saying. So you want to make sure that you're having a good time. And then if people do have slow service, I guess that's just over, you put some of them over the edge. I can, I, well, I don't yeah. like it. I don't appreciate it. I, but I can see that maybe it makes it a little worse for people. And let's be fair. Mm -hmm. Where you got to go? Well, what do you? Wh ain't, there ain't nothing going on. Like right, well, and just, that's the flip side of why it is nice to be able to go out because we all were in for so long, right? And right. And right. There's nowhere else to. It, it's not like well, you get some place. On, on the other side of that, the other challenge for restaurants is for us to survive. We got to be able to turn tables. So if 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 you are in a position where you've got to ask someone for their table back you better not have fallen down and made them wait too long for their food too like they're, they're, it's it's all a balancing act you know right now when we book our tables and look we haven't really run into this problem it's not very busy out there it really isn't um you know if you go into almost any given restaurant everybody tells uh, me, now last night you were busy that was a different oh my gosh it, yeah, we, were. Oh. We, were, we were but oh my but I and we were so out of practice <laughs> But I haven't been anywhere in the last, well, I hadn't, actually, you know, I had the kids in town for a while, so I really wasn't out as much, but it's been a big difference since, uh, say, six weeks ago when I was going out, and sometimes I couldn't even get a reservation to go where I wanted to go unless I called, you know, several days in advance, and particularly when everything was just reopening, like around early June, that, I mean, you you had to get in line and, you know, hope that you got in that night, but it's fallen off again. And our first, our first week we were open was pretty busy. I would say pretty busy. I wouldn't call it busy. Um, and it felt, uh, we were like, okay, we can do this. And then the radius around July 4th hit the week before the week after. And, you know, I, I, I would challenge you to find someone who would answer honestly and, and tell you that that is sustainable because it, because the, the, the business levels that, restaurants by and large are experiencing right now or not um whether we've had assistance from the government or not 
So that brings me to two other things. One, well, one thing we started on and another thing that's new. So if you had to go back to um, dining rooms being closed, if it comes down to that, is it really going to, um, is that going to be a tragedy for restaurants or is that going to be something that you might be able to, that you tell me, what's, what's, the, what's the take on that? Uh, I think it would probably be an easier model to run right now. Um, the the thing is though, so we our our delivery was pretty pretty busy during during the uh, the the time where, where dining rooms were shut down, and then as soon as dining room, we 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 were not even close to the first dining room to reopen, um, and when dining rooms started to reopen, that plummeted curbside and and so did curbside. You know, I, I would we we have a group thread and, and individual text with other chef owners and. You know, it's the same story everywhere. You know, as soon as dining rooms started reopening and the ones that had dining rooms open were busy and that's what people wanted to do. Um, I think that I think that the double edged sword there, though, is that while that's an easier model to to get your hands around right now, um, it also means you need less people. Um, and uh, I'll tell you that the hardest day that I've ever had was uh, was when. I had to have my managers lay off their staffs and then I had to lay them off. Mm. And, um, uh, and, and the reason I, it's, I feel like such a, like a evil corporate cartoon when I say that yeah, the reason that we did that, it, it can't explain that a little bit better too. That, that does sound, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 it, 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 uh, it was because we couldn't gather. Um, and, oh. and, and those those man, those managers had their um, all their teams on their own group texts. And I, I, you know, if you remember, we we shut down about a week before dining rooms actually shut down. And um, I wanted the, my team to be able to get in whatever line they needed to get in as as early in that line as they could. Um, as soon as I realized I couldn't take care of them, and to be honest with you, I didn't realize when I was actually when I was asking them to lay their teams off that I was going to have to turn around and do that to them. Um, but I literally, I, like I had a breakdown, uh, on the front lawn, a second line, um, after, after all that. And, um, it was, it was the loneliest that I've ever felt. It makes me, I'm tearing up right now thinking about it. And, um, you know, I, I know that it's probably easy to say, Oh, well, you know, you got to keep your job. I did. I did get to keep my job. And uh, I don't know what it was like to be on, to go through that time before we knew what the government was going to help people. You know, a lot of, a lot of people that, that work in restaurants made more um, during this time on unemployment than they normally would. Yeah. And that's and, is coming. The uh, supplement is coming to an end unless something changes. Have you heard? Correct. Of no, no. And, and as hard as it is, as hard as it is for, for us to, to create, correct staffing levels i really hope they extend it because there's a lot of restaurants in a lot of parts of town downtown those places that the restaurants just can't open yet and i I am while it's difficult on me as an owner i am all for extending those those benefits probably we're going to run out of time in just a few minutes but let me ask you one other thing uh two other things one ppp money i've heard a lot of people tell me ppp money is it's running out Is, is that right i mean we're out we're out how does it, how can it go so quickly? It was supposed to keep you going for what? Eight weeks, Eight weeks originally. <laughs> yeah, so, but it, it just, and then, but then they extended the payback time. You, things have changed in it. But I mean, did it really take it all that fast? So that was what people are truly out of the money now. Yep. You know, we, uh, we, we, uh, you know, you, you've got so many things. Um, we, we got to keep some people on salary on our staff. Um, we got to do a lot of different things with it. Um, we got to make sure that, that a portion and look, let's be fair, you know, every business that took that money, they got to decide if they wanted to, um, if they wanted to use it for a way that it was forgivable or take it as a loan or, or somewhere in the middle. And, um, you know, every business is going to be different with how they used it. Um, we got to keep as many people as we could employed. It was not everyone um, uh, that was on our team. But now you're you're on what you're bringing in again. Mm-hmm. 
close to it. Okay. All right. And mm-hmm. other people have, have said the same thing to me. Let's end this on a happy note and tell me what you're going to be doing on Friday and Saturday. So we are opening Restaurant Iris on Friday. Um, I don't know exactly if we're going to be Friday and Saturday only or if we're going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday only. But this weekend is going to be Friday and Saturday only. And this weekend uh, it's going to be uh, tasting menus, four-course tasting menus. And we're going to have a lot of fun. I think that you know we're trying to figure out what people want changes so rapidly. Uh, or what people want change, everything changes. Um, and we're going to give an option for a little bit of luxury, uh, very socially distant. It's a tiny dining room. Uh, we'll only have a few tables available. Uh, you know, and the other thing that we have and to you do is outside we, still, right? You, you oh, ab- absolutely. Yeah. That, that big patio is a shared patio. The other thing that we're going to have to do is I've got to be able to run both restaurants with the same amount of people that we have running one restaurant right now in that kitchen, because I can't put anybody else in there so they can stay, socially distant. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a, it's a brave new world for restaurants. Um, I hope everybody goes out and supports them. i really do. Well, I do too. And I hope that as long as it's safe, you're able to stay open. And I hope that if they, if it's deemed that it's unsafe and, and of course we, we didn't even get a chance to talk really about the, uh, too much about the limited service restaurants, but we will, um, as usual, we start talking and we, we, we go on, but, We'll I will tell. I will on, on that. This is. I will tell you one. One more thing, real quick. Sure. Through this time, you know, beforehand, uh, we were so segmented in the different types of business that we do as restaurants. And I will tell you that during throughout all this, I have so much more respect for people that are in this business, whether they be owners, whether they be servers, whether they be dishwashers on my team, on everybody else's team, no matter what they do, uh, no matter you know how well they do it or what that, what it is they're going after. Um, uh, we've been through the ringer and, uh, the, the, we're, a, we're a very resilient group of, uh, of people that work really hard. At what we do, we're proud of what we do and we appreciate everybody that comes up. Good to talk to you always. And I will, uh, I will certainly see you at some point next weekend, whether for dinner or for tacos or for whatever, I'll, I'll be there. You can subscribe to this podcast and others from the Daily Memphian anywhere you get podcasts, including iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and keep up with our monthly events at dailymemphian.com. For the Destination Delicious podcast, I'm Jennifer Biggs. In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place.